Hey guys, welcome to episode six of the Crane Rental Podcast. We have Todd Brown back, our safety training coordinator, right? That's it. Okay, we got it this time. Uh, today we're going to talk about load angle multipliers, how your load angles, your angles of your slings, relative to the load will change the actual proportion and weight that's exerted on the sling. If uh, you think you're hoisting 10,000 pounds and, uh, and you're not, you know, you're putting more stress on the slings than just 10,000 pounds. Yeah, that's right. So what sling tension increases based on the sling angle. Right. So that's, that's if you're in a full up and down, uh, you know, choke or, or vertical or basket or vertical is what you'd want to call it. Yeah. That's obviously a, a 90 degree angle to the load. That's it. Right. It's perpendicular to load by 90 degrees. So you're at hundred percent. But we're going to kind of go into more detail today of what happens when you change that angle relative to the load. What happens to the sling tension? We're going to find out Todd's going to explain that to us here uh, today on the cast. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to explain that kind of how we got the program going uh, in the training classrooms. Um, originally, I was doing uh, just crane training um, in State of New Mexico refreshers, and Fred Hamby had put together some rigging programs for, for us uh, along with the um, uh, Rigging Institute. Yeah, you may see uh, Fred on our other, if you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, if not, um, he has a uh, video on our YouTube page of him doing going over load angle multipliers, but we thought we'd refresh that video with uh, the podcast here so we can get it to some audio sources and do a little bit more. I mean, it's worth explaining because unless you know what's really going on geometrically uh, and mathematically, it, you know, you just don't know. Yeah, you don't know. But, sorry, so, so Fred, no, no, so, uh, <laughs> uh, Fred, um, Fred put together this classroom with the overheads and the, he did a lot of work on all that stuff, got all the materials together, he, he built one here, um, he put one in El Paso, and then of course one in Sweetwater, and um, he kind of got the program going, and, and, uh, um, and then one day he came in and he turned it over to me, and I've been doing it since, so. Yeah, we got a thousand pound uh, beam here, thousand pound capacity beam, it's actually derated 50%, so it's a two or four thousand pound beam, actually. Yeah. It's derated, so and then we've got a half ton hoist here, and we have our rigging sled. Right, so, right. So, um, basically, here's our crane. We put a scale in here. Well, this is actually a, uh, a yeah, well, it's a digital scale. Right. I was gonna come up with some fancy term, yeah. but I couldn't think of it. <laughs> Um, so we'll, we will weigh our, 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 uh, the total load right here, and this is connected, I believe, to uh, this right here. This will give us a readout on that. And then right here, you can see we have two slings. Right, these slings also have, uh, one has a load cell. Load cell, that's what I was thinking of, yeah. load cell. Basically, or scale. digital scale going to readout B. This is readout A, readout B. That's right. So we'll, 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 sorry, okay. we'll be talking about uh, the values you see on the screen because it may be hard to see, but we'll be, uh, we'll make sure we send the values and we talk about all these numbers um, so you guys know what's going on here. So what we've done is we've, had, we've got that uh, load cell, or skill's really a wrong term, but load cell um, there, and we have a spacer here to make up that, so the sling length's the same with the length, so. Oh yeah, because we've basically added four or five inches to this sling right. by adding this load cell. So if you can't see it, we have a basically two slings to a hook going to our rigging sled, and the rigging sled's equipped with some sort of weights. Uh, I'm not sure how much weight is on there. I guess it doesn't Well, we'll, we'll and we're gonna find out because we're gonna pick it up. Oh, right, that's yeah, very uh, true. So this sled or tray, either way, it doesn't work, doesn't matter. We'll pick it up. We're only use two points. And what we want to illustrate, what we can do is, if we want to illustrate that when we pick this up, you have tension, certain tension in these slings. But I'd like to rig it here. Oh, you want to go, oh yeah, first. So we're going to go short first, or closer to vertical, or closer to 90 degrees. So we're doing a, a 90 degree pick right now. Or close uh, to, not close to. Yeah, I mean, as close as we can get. But for mathematical sake, you just might as well call it a 90 degree because 89, 88 degrees, or whatever the case may be. Um, so we have, we're rigged up here. Uh, yeah. And so what and are we? In a straight vertical. And again, this is not perfectly vertical, but it's, so there's going to be some sling tensioning variances, but not a great amount. It's just for demonstration purposes. So I'll turn on the scales. Oh, okay, we got a. I guess a zero, we've got to make sure there's zero, but don't yeah, let, let them load up and then we'll zero them out. So, 
Again, here is our crane. Our half ton hoist. Are you qualified to operate this? I believe so, okay. yeah. Um, so we want to come up a little bit on that. Come on up. We're both or a hoist. Right? And then you want to hold it right there. Now I want to zero these out. Zero. Yeah. And zero. Oh, because now we have the rigging load, is what you're saying, right? Yeah, so we have the weight of the rigging. Right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm, we're not accounting for that right now. Right, that's that's just a negligible thing. But what is zero out anyways? Okay, so we're zeroed out. So now what we want to do is up. we want to go ahead and hoist and pick the load. This means a little more load to do. And of course, we're taking care of the two lock, but we're fine. So if you notice, you look look at the scale right. So, so scale A, which is a uh, hook. Uh, all the weight of the load on the hook is 56, 560, oh, 560 pounds. And it's swinging a little, so you might want to. So call it 560, right? What call it? And that's close, 560. Now, the tension or the weight that this sling is bearing is 295. Somewhere in there. So pretty close to half, right? Half of, pretty yes, close. Yes, 300 times 2, 600. So there's some. There's some little, I don't know what that's all about. I wonder why that so is. So what, what is half of 558, I guess? Oh, 560. Oh, 558 is uh, 250, 275. 275, but well, we got 294. But you have another 10, so it's about 280. So we're about right. So there may be some weight differences here. I'm not well, sure. Well, what it is is, the reason why we got a little more, just yeah. a little bit more than you would think here, is because this has an angle on it. Oh, you're right. We are at an angle. We're not exactly vertical. I don't know if you can see it. If I yeah. turn it this way, yeah, you can see if you turn it this way, the people at home can see watch it. Watch that table there. Yeah, you can see we have, here's 90 degrees, and we have a, this is exactly what we're talking about. That's right? exactly what we're talking about. But for, for, so but we're close to half. We're, we're basically So this is close to, this is maybe a 75. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, that, may be, that may be 90. Um, this, each sling, in a perfect world, would carry 50% of the load. That means it's the share of the load, the amount of the weight that this sling is actually picking off the ground, not the tension. Right. It's 50% in this case of the total load. Now, how you get the this tension in, is different. Right. Now, if you got it in this situation, what you do to get full 90 degrees, you'd have a little mini spreader bar here. Yeah, we could put a spreader bar here and get a true 90. But, but for, for uh, experimental sake, we're, yeah, we're dating close, man. So you can see. So, so we've got to remember this number, and I can actually write it here. What is, the, what is the sling tensioning? Uh, is the scale sling? B says 294, so 294 right. pounds. 294. LBs. LBs. And the total weight, so this is... Uh, it's 560's total weight. 560. LBs. LBs, and that's total. Right. Totes and goats, right? Totes, and this is, uh, what is it called? Sling, more but loading. Sling loading measured in or pounds, tension. right? Yeah. Or sling tension load measured in, in pounds, whatever you want to prefer, right? So that's the actual sling loading, the tension in that sling. What we can do is to demonstrate this is we, we go ahead and put the load on the ground and mm -hmm. we need a crane operator for that. Right. So put the load on the ground. So yeah, that'd be great. Right. Okay. So cable down, right? A little hand signal. Or lower. Right. Lower. We'll use the right turn every time. <laughs> lower. Keep on coming. And we're going to basically decrease that sling angle. Right, right. Does that make sense? Well, to people who may not be seeing it or know the industry, yes. The, well, so, okay, so what he's saying is we're at an angle of 75 degrees. I'm just guessing, let's call it maybe 75, 80, in our almost, in our almost 90 pick. Now we're gonna decrease that angle to more of a 60 degree angle. So what you're saying is the angle uh, is going down Compared from 60, or compared to 90. Right. Or, Does this go in there? Yeah, yeah. go through the, yeah. There you go. Give me a little. Yeah, I need a little cable there, buddy. Or lower. Or lower. <laughs> what does our little hand chart say? Uh, oh, it does say lower. Yeah. Todd's right. Well, and that's one thing I've got to have, because doing it in the field all the time is being, uh, we have terms for everything, but then when you teach it, or if you're, yeah. You, you, you start using your slang terms and it's really not the right way. We need to right. try to use, at least in the teaching field, the, the proper terms. Now, you, yeah, in the field you'll hear all this crazy nonsense. Yeah. Um, but that's for another episode. We should do signals on that episode. That'd be fun. Yeah, we can do signals. Uh, so let's come on up. Let's, let's, 
a hoist. Hoist? Is that the proper term? I'm looking, I don't see it. Oh yeah, it is hoist. Okay, so hoist is up, lower is down. Okay, hold on. Two block here. So what, we, what we've done is we've we've decreased the sling angle. So if the sling before was, let's say, at 90 degrees, right. we've now gone from 90 to, and we can probably get a kind of... Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put our little, well, let's do it the other way. So you're not gonna be able to see this exactly, but it's worth uh, seeing. We're basically at 50 degrees. Here's our 45 degree mark, and then this very small thing is 50 degrees. So this would be 90. Right, so here's 90. 90, and we're coming back boop, 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 to 50. Right. So we're now at uh, 50 degrees. Base. Um, It'll be, no, it's, it's basically 50 on, dog. Yeah, that's, and that's a good number. We won't use this for the math, but I just want to demonstrate that what happened. Now, if we look, we're still picking total weight. That's this load cell or this scale for of 560 pounds. Right. And we wrote here 560 total. From our previous one, so we're good. Our little mental check mark. Yeah, so we know we're doing it correctly. Then we come over to this load cell or scale, which is on this sling only, one sling only. Right. And you'll notice we would think that it would have half of 560, but or at least 294, right? Half of 560, we didn't do the math, but it's 250, uh, it's like 280 is half of 560, but we're at 294 from our previous almost 90 degree oh, pick. Okay. Now, look at that, we've increased, you can't see it maybe, but now we're at 375 pounds of sling loading. That's it. So the, te is, the tension in the sling has now increased, and it does it exponentially as we come down, yeah. to 375 pounds of tension in the sling. Now, before we had 294. Right. Went up considerably. Yeah, we went up. But Chris, uh, why, why is that important? Why is the difference important? Well, the difference is important because, hey, this sling may be rated for 300 pounds. Oh, let's call this, let's say, hey, yeah, this sling's rated for 300 pounds. That's a good example. Right? And then uh, I'm crane operator Joe, and uh, I said, okay, get the, you know, get the 300 pound blue endless, or get the blue sling, or the steel, steel rope, or whatever. We need the 300 pound sling. You put it on here, you're like, okay, Half of 560s, 230, or I mean 280, 300 pounds, okay, we're good to go. Yeah. In the real world, you want more leeway than that. But, but for example's sake, yes, that's right. you're saying, hey, you're good to go. Crane operator puts this sling in a, in a 50 degree uh, angle, load angle um, to uh, 50 degree angle to the load, right? Or to horizontal, to to Right. And now the actual sling is pulling at 375 pounds of sling loading. So your 300 pound sling capacity that you thought was good to go on the first pick, man, you're, you're, snapping, you're snapping rigging now. You're dropping yeah, loads. Yeah, so, so we're, we're basically, this sling would have a working load limit or, or safe working load of, we said, 300 pounds. In our example, load. yeah. And in that example, we are overloading that safe working order by, by 75 yeah, pounds. That's correct. So what we've done is we've got to always realize that sling angles matter, and sling angles increase the sling tension, which means we have to increase the size of the rigging. So that 300-pound sling was, was good in a vertical situation. Right. But in this situation where we've added a little bit of angle, we'll, I'm not saying, we didn't add angle, we decreased angle. To keep, the, to keep the terminology right. and, the, and the nomenclature the same, we've decreased our angle uh, relative to our load, right? We went from 80 or horizontal. Uh, so, or horizontal. So 90 that. degrees. Right? right, now we went and, to 50. And as this came down, we, we were down to 80 and 70 and 60 and then we're at 50. And as that load angle decreases, now we've increased the actual tension on this sling. So yeah, that, yeah, 300, that, that 300 pound sling is no longer viable in the situation. We, we'd have some, we'd have an incident. Yeah, I mean, you're pushing that, and, and, and I think that's an important thing to do because a lot of times we'll, uh, a person will pull up, and if they haven't been educated on this issue or they don't know how to do it, right. they'll read what's on the tag, say, hey, it's good for this, and then they'll put it on some extreme angles and Boom. you're hurting people and snapping rigging and dropping loads, and I think that's. And that's the real takeaway here is. Well, nothing is as it seems in the rigging when you add angles. No, yeah, everything changes. You got to keep in mind you're doing a lot of things here. There's a lot of dynamics here. We're compressing this load right now. Yeah, you're. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. This this top. I mean, this is a pretty solid structure. So 500 yeah, pounds may not handle. be. 
But essentially, this top part is uh, in uh, expansion, and the bottom parts. No, the bottom parts in expansion. Is top is in compression. Top is in compression. Bottom is in tension. That's in what tension, the and then we're compressing the top. Right. So we're pulling in. Right. Also, so you may have a structure or something that you're picking that can't handle that. We talked about that in one of our episodes, that tin roof example. Yes, that was, that's it. You know, where it's, it's not structurally too solid. Yeah. And when you pull up on these edges, you could crinkle it or collapse it, and then you got a problem. You, when you start putting these kind of types of forces on the slings. Yeah. Now, when you come straight down in a vertical, you may be good to go. So the next step is we, we need to look at what's really happening here. You, what you got to ask here, this is how we look at it. We have a load, and the load weighs 560 pounds, right? What we've done is we say, how many pick points do we have? In this case, it's two. And we'll get into four pick points probably on a later date, but let's just start with two. We have two pick points. Now those pick points, um, they are picking up a certain amount of this actual weight. Um, in this case, we're getting 50%, two pick points. So the share of the load or the amount of actual weight that this sling is picking up is half of the total weight. So the share of the load is half of the total weight in this case. This pick point is picking up actual weight. Its actual weight picking up is half of the total weight. And the same for this one. They call that share of the load. But as our angle starts to come down or, or starts to reduce, we have to multiply the amount of load that each pick point is picking by a number to get that tension in the sling. And by doing that, we know the tensioning, and we can pick the right rigging. So what I thought we could do is, instead of using this, this is just a physical example so that we can see. Yeah, it's a, it's a great physical example once you see this dynamic and work. And uh, for you guys listening on iTunes or SoundCloud or um, you know, Stitcher or anything like that, you may want to check out this video um, so you get the full effect. But we're going to try to uh, talk our way through this as well um, so you can kind of understand it. Yeah, yeah, there's no video for this, it's a little bit difficult, but um, again, th this is just a quick, you know, uh, look into this. This is not, uh, by no means, considered to be our training. Right. Um, it gets a lot more in-depth when we train this. Um, this, is our, this is our 50,000 foot view looking down on this. Of course, like you said, this is, no, you're good. This is not the extensive training. This, no. is a, this is a 40 minute uh, podcast here, guys. So. Yeah, yeah, this is, and again, we're just going to demonstrate <laughs> that, hey, sling angles matter, and to, to size your reading accordingly. Uh, let me pick this down, and what I like to do is, we can move this to the side. We can move all this over. Okay, I'm going to power down, right? Uh, Got a little. Pulling my crane over here. All right, power down. So, what I thought we could do, Chris, and I, I just wanted to show. The math on this. So we can go further and further into this. There's ways, you know, there's a lot we can do with this. Yeah. But for the most part, here's what your problem is. I've got this weight. It weighs 10,000 pounds. The center of gravity is in the center of the weight or is equal distance from the two pick points. Right. Okay, that's, that's important. Just for the example. We can do other things, but just for the example. Hey, Todd, let's actually move our camera set up forward here so we can get some more detail now sure. that our sled's out of the way. So I'm going to put you guys on pause just for a second. Yeah. Next time you see us, we'll be really close. So just hang tight, guys. All right, guys, we moved our camera set up or whatever you want to call it back. Or uh, not back, closer so we can see what we're going uh, to be doing here with our math. Todd's going to be helping us. I'll be running the calculator, so... Got the calculator going. Todd's gonna be walking us through the math here. Okay, so <clears throat> I have to get back to what we were doing because we had a little break. You didn't get a break. Right. right. Um, so the sling angle matters because the lower the sling angle, the greater the tension in the sling, and therefore we need to pick the right rigging. Right. And that's all we're saying. You're right. So the first thing we ask ourselves when we're looking at the sling angle, we ask ourselves, <clears throat> What is the share of the load? That is, how much of the actual weight of the load is each pick point going to pick? How much is this going to pick? And how much is this pick point going to pick? It's right. called share of the load. So in this case, Chris, what do you think our share of the load is? We've got two pick points. Well, now if I just straight up thought, if I didn't know what I know, I would say 5,000 on each point. But Todd's going to basically tell me I'm wrong. No, I, and that's what I was saying. You're actually <laughs> right. Oh, that's right, because the, the share of the load. The share of the load. You asked the trick question. Yeah, and, that, and that's the... So it's, and share of load is exactly that. 
It's how much actual weight are you picking up at each pick point? Right. Or how much actual weight is each sling going to pick off the ground? Yeah, so that number is basically whatever your weight is divided by two, right? In this case, because, because we have two slings. Yeah. Now, if you had four, only three are technically lifting the weight. One's kind of a there for, um, you know, About stabilization. So, so what we tell our guys is a lot of times we say, oh, we got four pick four pick points, right? And then all four of those pick points, you'll divide the total load by four, right? But that's not really accurate because depending on how well that's distributed, that weight. We tell our guys two of them carry the load and two of them balance oh, the load. Oh, two stabilize. So in that case, in most, in a lot of cases, depending on if you mitigate that issue, right. you're going to still be going with just two carrying the load and two balancing. Right. Same as we're doing here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's something, you gotta, then we can get into that later. Yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, rigging 202, right? This is... Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's still the 101, <laughs> but it's uh, only so much time. Yeah. So in this case, we said that the total weight is 10,000 pounds, right. and each pick point is, is, is going to have 5,000 pounds, or the share of the load at each pick point or each sling is going to be picking actual weight off the ground of 5,000 5, pounds. 5,000 LBs. Right. Um, here's, the, here's the thing about this. I, you know, let's just do the wrong hard way okay. from beginning instead of breaking it down like we're doing the class, because it's not enough time. To find out, we need to know what we need to multiply 5,000 by to get the tension in the sling. Now, what's our knowns? We have a 20-foot sling, right? Yes. We have a known angle. We actually, we don't have a known angle in this case. And this is... A, this oh, is okay. A, so, we don't have a known. So, this is a question mark? And we don't know that angle. We don't know that. Now, we can do it mathematically. For this one, we're not going to do it mathematically. I think what we'll do... It simply gets you into what the actual tension is. Okay. Um, we can move Todd, further. Todd's got us on the path here. Yeah, so the path. So we, what, what we have to do is we have to know mathematically. Now, there's right. other ways to do this. I can, if I know this angle, mm -hmm. I can simply look it up in a book, and it'll tell me what to multiply yeah. 5,000 by. And then we call that the, on left hand end here, so we call that the load angle multiplier, or lamb for short. Or, and you will see, you will also see it as L-A-F. And that's load angle factor or load right. angle multiplier. Same difference. Right. You see them both ways. Here's, here's how we're gonna do it. Let's, let's just do the math, we'll go through the whole thing, A to Z. In this case, we know that we're gonna put 20 foot slings on here. Right, we know the 20 foots. We know the 20 foot. We know our pick point weights of 5,000. So our right? share of the load, I'm gonna put, Share load of, excuse my load. Okay, there we go. A little slight on the E, but that's okay. Right. So share of the load is 5,000. We know it's 5,000 pounds. We know where there are 20 foot slings we're putting on here. And we actually know the distance between the slings. We know the length of the load. Now, some, there's some assumptions being made here that we probably should uh, go over. We're assuming the center of gravity is in the middle. Yeah, so we, if we're assuming the center of gravity in this example, is equal distance between the two pick points. Yeah, equidistant between. Uh, now, the center of gravity, yeah, I just bring that up because you're, you could have a center of gravity of over here, and this may change. And, this and then you're going to have to load it differently. With, sure. And so, it, it it's just worth mentioning. Yeah, so, and, and, and that's, but for, for right now, we're going to say they're equal distance. Right. So we're saying they're 20 foot apart. For, so, our, that, so our center of gravity is 10 foot if it's a 20 foot beam. 10 foot from each right. pick point, yeah. In order to get this load angle multiplier, and let's say we don't have the angle, right. so we gotta do certain things. We, to get that load angle multiplier, we've gotta find out the hook height. The reason that being is because what you do is you do the sling length divided by the hook height is gonna get you that multiplier that then you'll then multiply your share of the load by, and that'll tell you the tension in the sling. And I know that's a lot real yeah. quick, but We'll then, go through slowly. Yeah, then you can also come back and reverse engineer and find that angle. She, you sure could. It's but that's not, not important now. It's not, it's, it's actually from a field standpoint, it's not, it's not necessary. Right. It's not even, because you know the tension. Right. But there's another way, we have a card that you can simply, you could rig up and hold it up, mm -hmm. and you can tell what that angle is and look up the multiplier. Yeah, I'm looking to see if you have one. Those are pretty cool. Um, I don't have one out right now, I just actually have it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You just look at the card and says, oh, okay, boom, and you're good yeah, to go. Yeah, it's there. There's, there's another way to get that angle. Um, 
You know, we'll do it another time. Yeah, Let's yeah. stick with what we're doing. We're trying to get Todd all distracted and, and yeah. off track here, but he has, he's going to keep us on course. <laughs> I've, I've got it, yeah, because you can go different ways with this. Yeah. And we play games with it. And like, you know. Yeah, I mean, this is really a four-hour, eight-hour class. Yeah, so our rigging 101 is, it runs eight to nine hours. It, yeah. And usually it runs closer to nine because I like to talk. <laughs> so this is one subsection of that class, so we'll keep Todd on track here. Okay, so here's what we got to do. We've got to do the sling length. Right. Divided by... Our hook height. And that'll get us... Our load angle multiplier. And we're going to multiply that times... Our shared amount of the load. That is it. And then you have your sling... Tensioning. Tensioning. Or loading. So, you guys, I don't remember in school, um, Pythagorean Theorem? Yeah. What was it? That's a little uh, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, right? Yeah. And you're messing up my board, huh? Hey, it's a dry erase board. We can always erase. We can <laughs> okay. So you guys think this is a permanent marker, man. So here's how we're going to do. We need to know that hook height, right? Right. To get that loading and multiplier. Right. So can I just drop a little... Is it center of a... Uh, is it the opening? Where? Right here. Okay. Then we're going to drop this we're relative needing, to the load, right? Yeah. So this is 90 degrees always, right? Right. This is... we got our 90 degrees here. You're killing me, bro. Why? <laughs> no, you're okay. Um, Todd thinks I'm using like a sharpie here or something. So what are you doing? You're messing up my picture. <laughs> it's the dry I'm not used to having a partner. I don't, you know, that's how yeah, you, you usually ride solo? <laughs> doing I do, this? I do, I do. Oh yeah, you, you're just a one-man band. You I'm teach everything my, solo. Yeah, I'm by myself. It's a lonely job, let me tell you. Well, now we have friends here. Now you're <laughs> complaining about... <laughs> okay, so follow, follow me. Okay, let, me let me go through. So, the fact, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. If you remember it, or if you don't, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. We want to know that hook height. We want to know that hook height. Right. So in this case, we're missing B. Yeah, we don't know B. We don't know what B is. But we know what C is. C right. is 20. Right. That's our, our, that's our sling length. So basically what we're doing, I hope you can see this. We're saying C squared but minus... I may not be able to see this, so I'm going to mess up your board here. Yeah, yeah dude, whatever you want. That's, that's right. Okay, we wrote this down, A squared. I'm going to move this here. See how it just erases, Todd? I know, it's amazing. This is modern, modern science and modern marvels here. I think I'm just grumpy, I'll be honest with you. Okay, well it's Friday, man. Get excited. I know, I know. I got okay. a weekend. Yeah. Okay, so we have C squared, is what Todd's saying. I'm not going to... So it's going to be... So we change C squared minus... Yeah, let's get our... Okay, so C squared... Okay. Minus... What? A squared. Okay, so we're basically... Uh, we're going to move in order of operations here. We're going to get a little math lesson as well. When I change this a squared past this equal sign, I have to move it to a minus. That's correct. And that's what Todd's saying. Yeah. So this a squared now becomes a minus, right? It's a negative because I moved it past the, actually, the, the equal, equal sign. Equal. Okay, so I'm just trying to walk it through time. You're right. A, see, you're right. <laughs> c squared minus a squared equals... Well, what's left? B squared. There you go, b squared. And B's are unknown, right? Is B truly our unknown? It truly is. We don't okay, know. I'm going to put a little question mark here. Okay. So, here's how this works. You don't know B squared? I just know why. I might know it in my head, but... You haven't met him or anything? Or no, what? no, he's not around. Oh, okay. He's not around these uh, days? Yeah, I know. B squared? Yeah, I think near miss, some other things. <laughs> no, Who knows what B squared We don't is. know. Yeah. Okay, so here's how this works. C squared. So okay. C, in this case, I'm bright right here because I'm making C squared. C equals what? 20. 20 feet. We have a 20 foot sling, so 20 squared. But what is, what is C is 20, but what does squared mean? That means you times it by itself oh, yeah. one time. So if we have 400, right? So 20 times 20 equals, and by the way, this is not always the right way to write this, but it's the easiest. For yeah, it's 400. 400. And then so. So we have 400 right here. That's it. There you go. Okay. Now B squared, we don't know B squared. Todd hasn't met him, I haven't met him, we yeah, just don't know. Well, we may have met him, but Question mark he doesn't squared. work for us anymore for whatever reason. <laughs> he's, he's Greener doing, pastures, right? Yeah, he's doing other things. Yeah. Okay, so we have 400 minus... What's A squared? Well, if this is what's C a, squared... What's A, I guess, is the question. If this is B squared, right. this is A squared, right? What's that distance, though? A squared is the distance from the sling to our center of gravity. In this case, our 10 foot. 10 foot. So, 20 foot was here in the end. Right, you full would, span. You cut it in half because we say everything's equal. Right. Ten foot. Well, now let's play. Uh, our c our c squared is from the sling to ninety degrees below the hook. So a squared is or a, a not squared but a. Yeah. A, sorry. A is that. That's your center of gravity can be anywhere. I said it in relation to our center of gravity. That's misspoke. 
Uh, well, in our example, it's right, but really A is from the sling to the 90 degrees below the hook. Which always always ends up being at the center of gravity when you're done picking. Yes. Guaranteed. Yes. Guaranteed. It'll find center of gravity. It will find, well, and whether the beam's like this, because, you know, uh, this side is heavier, yeah. it's going to find it. Okay, so, so in our gonna, example, A is 10. So, so I'm going to say A equals 10, and then we said a squared, right? Yeah, we so got times it by itself, right? Times 10, which is a hundred. Um, yeah, right? I was thinking a thousand. I don't know. That's sorry. A hundred. Right, okay. Okay, so now what are we doing? Uh, this is the way I do it for class because it's, it's, it's uh, to me, it's more uh, friendly. Right, this is calculator time. We're getting yeah. the calculator time. So, so what we got to do is it says a, or c squared minus a squared. So what's c squared minus a squared equal? 400 minus 100 is 300. I'm going to do it this way, just for up here. Okay, he's doing it that way. I got my own. Yeah, no, you're right. right. That's actually correct. So we're so now I have um, is equal to, so we have 300. 300. Now squared. I squared. Squared. So my question is, is this thing 300 feet off? The, is it 300 feet between the, the load and, the, and the, the hook? No, see, it's squared. Okay, so that was... So I took my little square sign away. Now we have to find out what uh, that is. How would you type that in the in the calculator? Because we know it's squared, but how do we unsquare it or desquare? Unsquareify? Unsquare? Like, uh, improper term. Probably. <laughs> We're having fun. Okay. So uh, how do you do it? So to desquare, unsquareify, unsquare something, you yes. use uh, the mathematical fun function called square root. Right. How is the square root's the opposite of a square? That's it. Yeah. We're, we're going to unsquare this. Well, thing. if you have a cube, you'd have a, a cubic root of a, of a something. So, don't, 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 don't. Yeah, I'm not getting it. I'm confused, and I don't want to be confused. So, we, uh, take our, we take our square sign away. Now we have a square root sign to... Um, so, uh, here's my 300, right? Right. Now, how do I type that in the calculator, though? Well, if you have an iPhone, you have this, right? You have our 300, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're like, well, where the heck is Chris talking about square root? Then I just There's shift it to the side. Oh, now we have all of our mathematical functions. There's our cubic root I talked about. Yes, it does exist. Um, there's our square root. There's a 1 over x. There's our... Um, um, I'm just... Well, I don't even know I'm going off on these functions we're not even going to use. No, use what you... Hold on, I'm going to grab a regular calculator. So I was going to go old school, guys. I'm going new school. So, um, you're going old school, Todd. Well, yeah. I can't show this. I mean, because it's important that we understand how to do it. If I were, if I punch in square root, this little square root right there. Yeah, yeah. And I punch it in first, and I push three hundred. What happens? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. And I've seen that happen. And then we're, and then they get frustrated, right? And it happens. And I've done this. Uh, uh, but if I start typing three hundred, and then what do I? Then the function. Then the square root function. Right. Now I have seventeen point three. Mine uh, has a two over x. Same thing. Square root. Uh, 3 over x would be cubic root. We're going to take the square, 17.32, and the 20 extra numbers at the end. Right, right. So what did we learn here, Todd? Well, how high is the hook? I guess is the question. Yeah, that's, that's, what, what, that's what our, our b squared is. We haven't seen b squared. I'm confused now. I got me. <laughs> how high is the hook? 17.32 feet, right? Okay, we'll go with that. We'll go with that. I'm writing her in. 17.32 feet. Square root of 300. So what that basically tells us is um, our hook height in relation to the load is 17.32 feet. Okay, so this is and this is so why. Why does this matter? Well, let me show you why this matters. This is why I didn't want you writing it there because I'm you know, big baby. You can erase it. Dude. I'm erasing. It. Okay, he's erasing my fine crafting. See, that was perfect math. I was. It was good. But... <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're good. So we know it's 17.32 feet. Okay. Now back to the original problem. What was our problem? We need to know the load angle factor or load angle multiplier so we can times that by our sling, our, our shared load weight to get our actual sling tension, right? Or sling loading. Or sling loading. What's in that sling? Right? Okay, so here's how this works. Okay, we've got our hook height. We use the Pythagorean theorem to get our hook height. Our magic hook height. Okay. Our B squared. Our B squared. <laughs> yes, we win. Okay, let's go from there. So to get that multiplier, we got to do the sling length divided by the hook height. So let's let's put this kind of right on here now. Yeah, yes, you may. Okay, I have to ask for you need for permission now. Uh, sling. I'm gonna put LD for loading. 
here's, I'm just going to write this mathematically because I'm, I'm a visual person. Maybe oh, these guys right. are too. Yeah. Uh, now, this is our hook height, right? Yeah. Hook H, right? That's good. Now, this equals our LAM, or as Todd said, our load angle factor, right? Same thing, yeah. Right? Now, let, me, let me show you, and this is what, I do this for purpose, okay? What I don't do is, if you, if you take your calculator and you go, instead of just punching in 20, punch in 17.32 and, and then put divided by, Okay. you follow me on this? 20 equals, what do you get? You get a, a number more than one. You get a oh, no, a number less than one. Yeah, so what that is, is there is no way that the, this sling's tensioning is it's less, less. Than, it, than its actual load is Ah, you bring up an excellent point, because you could get confused uh, with dividing, you know, you're in the heat of the moment, yeah, you're on site or something like that over yeah. here, and what you're basically saying is this sling tension is going to be less than 5,000 pounds, impossible. or 86% of it. That's exactly what we're saying. That's not impossible. That's not impossible. So we always show that for a reason, so that mm. we know in the field, if you get these numbers, you know you need to relook at it. Basically, if you get a number lower than one, you're wrong. Because you're always going to have one. Yeah. So turn it around. So look, look at this. So one. turn it around like this? No, well, no, no. Yeah. Flip, <laughs> flip the numbers. I know. So I'm going to say, I'm gonna, instead of that, I'm going to say 20. Right. We have our sling length. Just like you have it there. And 20. I'm going to say divided by the hook height, which is 17.32. And that equals... 1.1547 and then a bunch of other numbers. That's right. Now, here's the, here's the, here's the, great, here's the thing. Keep this in mind. Okay. When you're doing rigging, you want, because you see how this decimal and all these numbers? Yeah. You always want to round to what makes you safer. I know that sounds different. So you want to round up. In this case, you want to round up. Because if you round down, you're, in, you're not safe. So 1.15 we we're going to round it instead. You see, the next number was four, right? Yeah. See, 1.15. Well, this is four. <laughs> this is how. Well, how many places do you want to round to? Because that's well, a let's, seven. Let's, let's just go out to. Let's just go out to. Let's just go out two past. Okay. Is that cool? So, and you can do what you want, but if you're going to go 1.15, and the next one's four. Now, normally in math, what would you do? You'd round down. Not in this case. What makes you safer? Well, to round up, but also if you went another place, you'd say that's a seven, that becomes a five, and then maybe. But we're you can only round going out. at we chose to go at just two. Oh, okay, so 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 instead of one point one five, we're gonna go one point one six. Yeah. So he's gonna make it a, an even Steven, right? Yes, that's correct. We want. How kind of can do that? So let me. So let me. Hold on. I'm gonna number of just so I can show the way I got it. Hold okay. On. Just be. Just be, be, be. Be patient with hey, me. Hey, it's a dry erase board. Okay, so <laughs> 20 divided by 17.3 is, we're going to say is 1.16. Six. Six. Right. Because we wanted it to make it safer, not... Right. Okay. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to erase your stuff here. Just yeah, yeah, that's fine. We'll rewrite it. No, I mean, this is that's just for visual sake, of course. Of course. Uh, so this number represents, what is that number, Chris? I can't remember. What is that? This is our load angle multiplier, or as Todd said, our load angle factor. Well, both, you know, are same, mean the same thing, just different terminology, yeah. of course. What's a faf? Oh, I don't, that's an L. Can't you, what's wrong with that you? That's like a faf. What, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Okay, now we are right. Okay, no, no, laugh. No. Okay, now I know what that yeah, is. It's a laugh. laugh. Your laugh or your lamb? Yeah, your lamb. So why do we need the again? Why do we need the loading and multiplier? Because we're gonna then further times with the little asterisk, right? That's a multiplication symbol. Yeah. Times our share of the load to find our true sling tension and sling loading, right? That's it. And then what do we do with that? Then we size up the proper rigging to uh, make sure this thing doesn't snap, or we have a nice safety factor, a nice cushion, so it can safely perform this job. Because we just we want to do the right thing, right? Yeah. So. 1.16 times. Now we're going to have to get the calculator out again. 5. That's timer. Let's get calculator. Because what was the 5,000 number? That's our shared, or share of the load. Okay, right? So share. I guess I don't need it in sideways mode. We can go full mode here. Load. Let me just make sure that's, yeah. Okay. 1.16, our lamb or laugh, or our faff. Not the best. Yeah, our faff. <laughs> our faff? Our faff? 
<laughs> times 5,000, which is our share of the load, which we determined here, which is 10,000 divided by 2. This is an even beam. So we take our 5,000, right, times 1.16. Now we have 5,800. So what does that number represent? 5,000. So that means these uh, slings are experiencing 5,800 pounds of tension, right? Um, versus what we normally thought, 5,000. So, so if in a, in a vertical pick, these, these would be experiencing 5,000 pounds of, of tension. Yeah. Now that we threw it and decreased our angle, right? Mm -hmm. Now we've increased our sling tension um, by 800 pounds. We have. So if we had, if we had a 5,500 pound capacity sling, which I don't even know that they, they exist, I'm making numbers up, sure, but, you'd, right. be, you'd be hosed. Yeah, you, you, you'd, you'd be 300 pounds over the, the working load limit on that sling. Now, would it work? I'm not sure. No, well, no. We're, it, it, we don't, we never go beyond the working load limit, safe working load That's limit. That's where I'm sense. going. You, these things have safety factors built in, but what the tag says is what the tag says. You, you, you go by the tag, and that's all you can lift. See, when you look at those things, when it says that that's a sling that's came come straight from the manufacturer, it's in pristine condition. Right. Um, that's what those numbers are based on. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you. What is it? What's the safety factor? Well, it depends on the sling, but most rigging is, has a five to one safety factor. Right. So that means when the brand new out of the box, if you pull test those, um, and you they should break at five times what the tag says the working load limit is on. But that's pristine, and there's a reason yeah. that factor's in there. That is not for us to really use. No, you don't ever want to, I mean, that's built in, so you have some safety factors built in, but you really need to go by that tag and measure and accurately do your loads based off that. Now you're gonna have other things. You'd be damaged that you may sure. not see, yeah. or that may degrade. Mm -hmm. So that fa safety factor is, is a moving scale, but what we do know is if you have a 6,000 pound sling, mm -hmm. You'd be good to go. You should be good. And, and if, if you drop down to a five thousand pound sling, you're going to be you're, you're putting everybody at risk. You're everybody at risk. So here's what here's up. So the, this five thousand eight hundred pound that's the sling tension. That's how much tension's in that sling. Right. It's only picking five thousand pounds. Why I say only? Actually, yeah. but the tension in the sling based on this, we're angling it down. Right. You know, and then, and that's where we come. Up. So from here, I always put equals what equals what rigging. Excuse my G's is needed. Yeah. So what we're, what we're saying is you've got to pick this reading based on that number. Right. I'm gonna circle it a thousand times here. Yeah. And then and then that's the whole of the of the package. Now there's other ways to do this. Sure. There's other ways to do this, and we can do it another time. Um, but what we want our people to understand, and then everybody understands that when you start to bring these slings down like mm -hmm. that. You're creating great tensions, and it, this multiplier. The more I bring this down, it's exponential. If I could get this perfectly flat, it'd be two, wouldn't it? No, it'd be infinite. Oh, you see, what I'm saying it's not possible. Sure, no, sure. Nothing can do. But that's an infinite number. So you're re really infinite approaching multiplier. approaching infinity here. This is the asymptote is infinity. Yeah, I mean, you get down when you get down in here. I know I couldn't give you the, but you you can yeah. have a multiplier of eleven or twelve. Wow. You know, it, it, and then, it, then if you get perfect flat, you have an infinite multiplier. Wow. So. Just don't get into infinity multipliers. It's not possible because <laughs> no, no material can maintain it perfectly. But right. Yeah. So uh, I, I hope that's kind of enlightening. I know it's broke up and it may... No, I think this is a good way of putting it and um, it really kind of brings some light. We had our example in the very beginning. Now we have our board example of how we're actually doing in real world. It really makes you think of what you're actually picking up when you're out in the field. Because you have so much going on. You have your... Um, sight guys yelling at you to get moving. You have your rigger, he's doing his thing. We're getting the crane set up. We have other jobs. We have a dispatcher calling. You know, I mean, there's so much going on. Yeah. And you're like, just get the slings, but you really need to know what you're lifting, the actual weight, and how much you, you know, what capacity of slings you need. Right. How did you do it in the field when you were in the field? Uh, me? I, well, this is how I, how I do it. Well, this is, is this pre-job planning? Obviously. It can be pre-job. It is pre-job planning. I mean, it, it, sometimes it's, we engineer in the field also right. because not everything is an engineered lift from the office. Yeah, and you're an operating engineer. Yeah, and so there's right. those issues. Keep this in mind. When this gets, when I see this angle, 
when I see my slings, when it gets to 30 degrees, yeah. this multiplier becomes 2. Ah, okay, so that's where the 2 is. So this becomes 10,000 pounds of tension in that case. So when you have here... And that's 30. That's like a sideways, I think that's an M. I gotta go left-handed old school here, 30 degrees. Now, uh, this, this factor becomes a 2, this becomes 10,000. Now you have some beefy anacondas. Yeah, yeah. I you mean, have the anaconda slings that you're using or something, right? And I'm right? compressing my load. But, but you know, the, this... Oh, yeah, you're, you're right. You put compression on your load times 2, so this better be sturdy material. It better be able to handle it. Because it can fold, right? Or crush it or whatever. Like right. It. But for in the field, when I look up that and I see that these angles are coming down, I already kind of know 90 is good, yeah. 30 is times 2, and if I go about halfway and I can see halfway between that, I need to be 1.5, somewhere in there. Yeah. So generally speaking, when I start seeing angles coming down on this and I don't have a lot of cushion, I'm going to just assume it's, it's 30, even though it's, it's not, even though it's more degrees yeah, than 30. Yeah, it could be 45. And I'm going right. to just double, I'm going to make sure my tag is double what, it's, what the share of the load is. And that's kind of how I've done it. Okay. But once I get into the 30s, if I go below 30, you know zero. It's I'm, I'm pulling out my card, I'm doing some math for sure. That's, that's how I was. Yeah. Now, this is a small beam here. This is a 10,000 pound beam, which is five tons. Yeah. Which is, which is nothing. In, uh, in the field, we do 100,000 pound loads, yeah, which I mean, is 50 tons. I think 300,000 pound pick just not that long ago. So yeah, so that's 150 tons. So when you start timesing these things and getting bigger numbers here, this really adds up fast of what's going on. Yeah, it's important to understand the concept. You know, we know in the field that we're going to use these cards. I didn't have bring one here, but yeah, you know, you can just look at it and it gives you that multiplier. It's pretty cool. And there's lots of ways to do this, but this gives you the, uh, the base picture. Yeah. Um, hope it wasn't too broke up and confusing. But no, I think uh, I think once you follow this uh, through, um, it should be okay. Okay. Good deal. Anything else you want to discuss on this? No, I think this is pretty much load angle multipliers. Uh, now we can do it another way too, and maybe that's a subsequent video and podcast we'll do. But this is the basics of load angle multipliers. Yeah, I mean, and load angle factors. And, and and we threw in this Cook Pythagorean, you know, and right. But it's but it's understand. It's good to understand the triangle and how a triangle works. Right. In our field. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I've never done. Well, I did it this way a few uh, when I got my written card. Um, but I forgot about the hook height. So it's kind of cool. It was a fun refresher. Good, good deal. Yeah, and it really makes you think, man, what's really happening here in the field when, you, when you're picking this stuff up. So it's easy just for somebody on the, on the outside looking and say, oh, yeah, it's 5,000 pounds. You got two slings. Okay, you know, just get to 5,000 pounds and you're good to go. Yeah, and, and it, G doesn't, G. it doesn't work that way. Yeah. It doesn't work that way. Uh, I, you know, again, what we had said before, being a rigger requires... To be a true rigger and professional requires that you have these concepts pretty firmly set in your mind. Yeah, you have to know what's going on. Okay. And some other things that we mentioned, some traps you can fall into. If you're loading a multiplier below one, you're inverting your, your, your math. Yeah, yeah, so you're basically dividing it correctly. Yeah, so you're never going to have anything below one. Um, on your load angle factor, load angle multiplier. So that's just a good tidbit. Yeah, actually, I mean, I'm in the field and we're doing it. I'm glad that you brought that and up. And boom, it's like, well, this is not working out. Oh, yeah, it's 0.8 times that, 5 times Okay, we're good to go. Oh, well, no. Yeah, we, but... We got 0.08 or 0.8. So. Yeah, it's not 86% 80, of it. It's, yeah. it's actually 116% of... That's exactly what it if is. If you want to think about it like that. Oh, one being, yeah, one being 100%, 16 being uh, 16%. 116% of 5,800 5, pounds. There we go. Okay. All right. So should we end on that bombshell? I think that's good. I'm, I'm glad to end. So we'll, <laughs> we'll move on. Okay. Well, guys, this is episode six, loading a multiplier with Todd Brown, safety training coordinator. Got it twice in, man, twice man. in a day, man. We're catching on. Yeah. I'm Chris Martin, marketing coordinator. Thanks for stopping by and listening to us for the last 50 minutes or so. We hope that you got a lot of, out of this loading a multiplier. If you have any questions, uh, you can always hit us up on the email, on the Twitter, the Facebook, uh, links in this com uh, you can comment on this. Send us a smoke signal, right? Yeah. Skywriting, we don't care, just uh, however you want to contact us. At, on Twitter, we're at Crane Service Inc. At Facebook, we're facebook.com slash Crane Service Inc. I can go through all of them. LinkedIn, we're at Crane Service Inc. Uh, as well on LinkedIn. Um, our info line, info at craneserviceinc.com, that goes to me so I can answer those questions. T Brown at uh, craneserviceinc.com. Yeah. If you want to email Todd directly, um, leave us your comments or email us your questions.
we're glad to uh, answer it any day, right? Yeah. We enjoy safety. the industry. We enjoy doing it. Yeah, safety is uh, number one, and we just got to stay and try to be safe, guys. So let's uh, end on that, right? Okay. All right, guys. We'll see you next time Thank for you. episode seven. Uh, we'll probably be with Todd, but we're going to go over that another time. All right. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye.